people there. Okay, today's daf Ezra Hashem is daf Mesechta Kedushin daf Nun Ches, and we're going to make the screen very big. Okay, we're discussing over here that when you give, when you want to be Kaddish and Isha, you have to give her something of value. You cannot give, we learned yesterday, let's say you give her a cheeseburger. That's Basar Bechalov. Basar Bechalov, you're not allowed to benefit from. So you can't go over to a woman and say, here's your cheeseburger, be Mukudashas to me. And the Mishnah listed off a bunch of other things that, that uh, are not permitted to benefit from, and thereby, and therefore, you cannot be Makadish and Isha with. For example, an apple of Orla. Let's say if uh, an Orla tree that's not three years old, you take an apple off that tree and give it to the woman and say, Hareat Mukudashas Li, she's not Mukudashas to you because it, it's it's Osir Bahano. Another example the Mishnah gave is the Chulin. If you take an unconsecrated animal, you shecht it in the base of Migdash. So I have a regular sheep that belongs to me and I bring it into the base of Migdash and I shecht it. Once I shecht it, that animal becomes Osir Bahano. I can't benefit from it. And therefore, I cannot be Mekadosh and Isha with that. So the Gemara asks the question, how do I know that if I shecht an animal in the base of Migdash that's not a Korban, it becomes Osir Bahano. I'm Rabbi Yochanan Mishum Rameir. Rabbi Yochanan said in the name of Rabbi Meir, Amra Torah, the Torah said like this, the Torah talks to you, Hashem talks to you, and he says, Shechot li bishli, shecht my animals in my place, which means shecht karbonis in my base of Migdash, v'shalcha, and your animals, v'shalcha, and your animals, shecht, you know, in your cities, you know, that non, uh, non-consecrated animals, shecht where, where you live. Ma'ashu li bishlcha, Aser, if you take a carbon and shecht it, in your place, it becomes Aser. Afshalcha. So if you're going to take a Chulin animal, Bishali and Shecht it in the base of English, Aser, it's Aser. So the Gemara asks, Imashali uh, Bishalcha Anish Karis. Just like if that's the case, then I would think that just like if you Shecht God's carbon in, in my place, you get a karis. The Torah says, if you don't shecht in a carbon in the base of English, but you shecht it outside the base of English, you get the death of karis. So I would think the opposite is true too. Afshel chabeshali anush karis. Then I would say that if you shecht my animal in the base of Migdash, you also get karis. On Makra, the pasuk says, "Vel pesach oil moed lehidir lahakar of carbon l'ashem benichras." Only if you the Torah only sp- specifies karis. Only if you take the carbon and don't bring it into the base of Migdash and you shecht it by outside. But in the reverse case, you take an achulin and you shecht it in the base of Migdash. There is no karis. A uh, carbon anish karis only in a carbon outside the base of Migdash you get karis. A chulin shnishchatu barzara ain anish karis. There is no karis. A uh, chulin that's shechted out uh, in the base of Migdash. So the Gemara says that maybe it's not aser. Maybe God only asered bahanoa only an animal, a carbon animal that shechted outside the base of Migdash. But not if I bring a chulin into the base of Migdash and shech that, maybe there's there, it's not also Bahana. It's 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 it, you can't compare it to a carbon that shechted outside the base of Migdash because there you get karas. So that's why it's Asr Bahana. But perhaps, perhaps if I take a chulin and bring it into the base of Migdash. The, the animal and shecht it there, the animal would not be Asr Bahana. So again, how do I know what is the source? The Gemara needs to know the source of Kul and Shnishchatu Bazar, you get Karas. You get it's Asr Bahana. Ela Amar Abaya Abaya said like this, Mahacha, the Torah says by Ashlamim, Ushchatay Vishachat Oisay Vishachat Oisay, Trosa Kroy Yeserit. Three times extra, the Torah says, shecht the carbon animal in the base of Megdish. Ma Talmud Loima. The Tishnema, it Pasik says, The Torah in the in the time that we lived in the base of, in the Mishkan, when we were living in the desert, you cannot, you know, have any, you cannot eat meat unless you brought it as a carbon. Then the Torah later on, I think in Parshas Re'e, it gives you and uh, tells you that you're eventually not going to stay in the desert forever. You're going to come to the Eretz Yisrael. And if you don't want to bring a carbon, then you can shech. The Torah tells you you can shech in your own cities for your private animal use, for eating. So the Torah says, Yirchak berichak makamat You can only shech those chulin animals outside the base of Migdash, distance from the base of Migdash. But you cannot shech a chulet in the base of Migdash, in the base of Migdash. Here the Torah is telling you, don't shech a, a chulin 
in the base of Migdash. So the Gemara says, mm-hmm. Maybe the Torah is telling you, you can't take an unblemished animal and makrav it in the base, in shechted in the base of Migdash, because potentially the Hashem says, if you're bringing an a unblemished animal, bring it as a carbon. Don't, don't, uh, don't, don't, uh, Bring it back home. Don't uh, make re- let it remain chulin. That's why it becomes asa. Menai and the rabbi is bali mumin. How do I know to include a blemished animal? A blemished animal. Imagine an animal that has a little blemish that cannot be brought as a carbon. If I shech that in the base amigdash, how do you know you're not supposed to do that? So the Gemara says marabani bali mumin shekay min hamachsha because at the end of the day. If it wasn't, if it didn't have a blemish, it would be fit to be brought as a carbon. So therefore, if you keep it as chulim, you can, and you shecht it in the base of Megdash, it will, it will become aser. How do I know that if, let's say I bring a deer, a deer is a kosher animal. How do I, I know, and a deer can never be brought as a carbon. And, and, and how do I know if I bring a deer and a wild animal like that into the base of Megdash and shecht it, how do I know you should not, you're not supposed to do that? The Gemara says, Mar it's, it's very similar to a, a regular animal. So we'll include it also a wild animal that also Hashem does not want you to bring a chulin deer and bring it into the base of Megdash. How do I know to include birds? A bird that's unconsecrated, bring that in the base of Megdash. How do I know you're not supposed to do that? So the Gemara concludes and says, even if I don't marba anything, the Torah says, mm-hmm. the Torah says by a shlamim, only shlamim should be shechted in the Beis HaMikdash. Mm-hmm. Ah, so not, not a chaya, not, um, not um, a, a, a bird. And one is you do shecht it, you're not allowed to eat it. We're going to learn that in a moment. But the Torah is telling you, limiting it, only a carbon can be shechted in the Beis HaMikdash. You can't, bring an unconsecrated animal and shecht it in the base of Migdash. So now the Gemara asks, I would think you're not allowed to shecht it, but if you shecht it, you can eat it. Maybe the Torah says, don't shecht in the base of Migdash, only carbonis. But if you shecht it, then it, it'll become mutter. The Torah is pretty uh, specific, pedantic on it, that even if you shecht it, you're not allowed to eat it. If you shecht it in the base of Migdash, you're not allowed to eat it. We go to the top of so what the Gemara just just repeated it and said that not only not only you're not allowed to slaughter a non a chulin animal in the base of Megdash, but if you slaughter it, you're not allowed to eat it. Okay, so now we know you're not allowed to eat it. But how do I know if I'm not going to eat it, but I'll benefit from it? Like I'll be a Kaddish woman or give it to my gaita. How do I know that you're not allowed to even benefit from it or give it to as dog food. So the Gemara says, I know that you're not allowed to shecht it. Maybe, but I'll say, maybe if you do shecht it, you could give it to your dog. Talmud Loima, the Pasuk says, that by a trefa, like trefa on a vela, you're not allowed to eat trefas, but you could give it to your dog. Only a trefa animal you can give to your dog. But you cannot give to your dog. Basically, that's another way of saying you cannot benefit a non-consecrated animal that was slaughtered in the uh, in the base of Migdash. If you slaughter it, not only you can't, if you did an Avera by slaughtering it, you're not allowed to eat it and you're not allowed to benefit. So that's the source of our Mishnah. Our Mishnah says if a man went into the base of Migdash with his personal animal, shechted it, right? In the base of Migdash, it wasn't a carbon, and now he wants to be Makadish, a woman with it. It's the Kedushin is invalid. Why? Because you, once you shechted it, you're not allowed to benefit from it, and therefore the Kedushin is not. Uh, you didn't. You weren't. It was not. You weren't Makadish, a woman with it. And that's the source of our Mishnah uh, of a shachet oisay, and that was the long piece of the Gemara. Now the Gemara just tells you a little a little story. You just got through saying chulin shinishchatu ba'azara. 
is what? Is Osir Bahano'a Min HaTorah. Ashkechinu Mar Yehuda, Mar Yehuda, Mr. Yehuda, well, found himself in the Rav Yosef of Shmuel Bray, the Rabbah Babakona. He found himself talking with Rav Yosef and, and Rav Shmuel, the son of Rabba Babakona. So Mar Yehuda is talking to them. They were at the entrance to Rabba's house. So before they went into Rabba's house, Mar Yehuda asked the question. He asked the question. Tanya, we learned in a brisa. If you makadish a woman, Let's say with Peta Hamar or let's say Basa Bakalov. Uvuchulin Shinishkatu Ba Azara. Rabshimin Oima Mukudashis. Rabshimin says the Kadushin is valid. Now, according to Rabshimin, we learned yesterday, Rabshimin has the opinion that a cheeseburger, right, is Basa, which is Basa Bakalov, you are permitted to benefit from. And therefore, if you Makadash an issue with that with that Basa Bakalov, she's Mukudashis. But what you also see in this Mishnah, in this Brisa, that Chulin Shinishchatu Bazara, Rab Shimon holds it's worth something, and it's not Asr Bahana, and therefore if you make Kaddish an issue with it, she is Mukudashis. So that's a, a, a dissenting opinion. But Chacham says, no, you're not Mukudashis because you didn't give in the issue any, anything of value. You're not allowed to benefit from it. Alma, so we see that the opinion of Rab Shimon is Chulin Shinishchatu Bazara, Rab Shimon, Lab Daraisa. It's not Minat Torah. Uh, uh, to to Hulin that was shechted in the in the in the Azar in the base of Migdash, it's not Menat Torah Aser. So Rab Shimon is the dissenting opinion. So the Gemara asks a question. So Rabbi Yehuda said, "Uraminu, I'm going to ask you a contradiction." Rab Shimon Oimet Hulin Shinishchatu Ba'Azara Hulin that was slaughtered in the base of Migdash. Yisarfu, you should burn it. In other words, Kachim. Let's say. Uh, the, that's a very strict opinion. It, it, by saying that if you shecht chulin in the base of Migdash, that you burn it, basically you're treating it as if it's so awesome in a Torah. Because you, what you could have said is that, uh, uh, let's say a chaya, you take a deer and you shecht it in the base of Migdash, don't, you don't have to burn it, you could just bury it. Why did he say burn it? Because he's treating it as so strict, as like a derisa. And just like Let's say a carbon. You shechted a carbon, and it turns out the carbon was possible. So you don't sprinkle the, the dam on the mezbeach. What you do is you burn it, right? That's also bahanoa. Every uh, everybody agrees that since you didn't sprinkle the blood on the mezbeach, the animal remains also bahanoa. You should burn it. So if Rabbi Shimon is so strict in treating chulin shneshchatu ba'zara, especially a deer chaya shneshchatu ba'zara, that you should burn it, it must be. That he's true thinking that Chulin Shinishat Kumbazora is not also Medrabonam to have Hanoa. It's even also Medairaisa to have Hanoa. So, if so, now you have a, a contradiction between Shimon and Rab Shimon. The second Brysis seems to say Rab Shimon holds Chulin Shinishat Kumbazora is also Bahanoa Medairaisa. And in the first space, and the first where he says you could be Mekadesh a woman with Chulin Shinishat Kumbazora. If Shimon says it's Mukudashis, it must be you're permitted to have benefit from it. And with the Raisa, it's a good Kedushan. So what is it? What is Rab Shimon's opinion? So Ishtaku. So this Rav Yosef, Rav Shmuel Brei, Rabba Babachana, did not know how to answer this contradiction to of Mar Yehuda. Then the door opened. Also the Kami the Rabba, they entered Rab Rabba. And Rabba had the answer. Amalhu Palga Akminka. This guy is a cantankerous individual, and therefore he asks you this contradiction. And you think there is no terrors. Really, there is an answer. Everybody holds Hulin Shnishkatu Ba Azara is also Bahano. Then why would Rab Shimon say that if you take Hulin Shnishkatu Ba Azara in Mikadash and it, it would be Mukudashas? So the Gemara says, Rab Shimon Latame. That's talking about you took the animal, brought it into base of Migdus, shechted it there, and then it turned out to be a trefa. So therefore, you didn't really shech chul in the Azara because it's a trefa shechita. So Rab Shimon Tame, the time we learned to the Brisa, a shechit as a trefa, you shech the trefa animal. You didn't know it was a trefa animal. You know, sometimes you, you only find out after you cut it open and then you see there's a hole in the in, in the lungs or something like that. Sometimes you can see on the outside it's missing an, uh, 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 a leg. The Tanakama holds its chulin in the azara. 
So Rab Shimon Mate Bahana. Rab Shimon says it's Mutter Bahana because it, 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 you didn't do anything, you did something wrong, but not so wrong because it's not a kosher shita. Shita she'ena ruya is not a kosher shita, and therefore the animal does not become Asr Bahana. The Chachamim Aisr Chacham says, no, it's still Asr. The bottom line is, the bottom line is that because Rab Shimon holds that if you shech a chulin and it turns out to be a trefa, you really, it, it doesn't become Asr Bahana. If I thereby go and Makadash Nisha with that trefa animal, she would be Bukadashus. And that was what the first Bryce was talking about, where Chulin Shinshat Shuman says, if you give it to a woman, she's Bukadashus, because it was turned out to be a trefa, a trefa animal, then it doesn't have the restrictions of it being Asr Bahana. But if it was a kosher animal, and I took the kosher animal, shechted into the base of Migdash, uh, everybody would agree it becomes Asr Bahana. The Gemara continues. We learned in uh, in the Mishnah, Again, let's say I had the cheeseburger. Instead of giving it to the woman, I sold it and I took money for it. Ah, if I took money for it, then the, the, the Issa Hano does not transfer to the money. And therefore, if I give it to her, she's Mukudashas. So in Manolan, how do you know the Issa Hano does not transfer to the money? The answer is, Only by Avoy Zara does the Avoid Zara transfer its Isser to whatever you bartered it for? The Torah says by Avoid Zara it should be uh, abominable like it is. Anything that you turn into it becomes like the Avoid Zara. In other words, let's say I have a doll that's an Avoid Zara doll and I trade it in for a piece of meat. Not only does the Avoid Zara remain also, but the piece of meat also has to be destroyed. So that only applies by avoid the Zara, that that the the Issa transfers over to whatever I exchanged it for. Mechla, from we see over there, the Chol Yisurim Tara, any Issa and Tara, such as Basa B'Cholav, it doesn't transfer to whatever you transfer for. Sorry, and therefore it's permitted. So the Gemara says, Menelaf Mina, let us learn from avoid the Zara that any time I transfer it, transfer it, the Issa transfer to the thing that I bartered it for. This idea appears by another Isidaraisa, which is Shemitah. And therefore, the Torah tells us by Shemitah that it also transfers. If I barter, let's say, fruit of Shemitah's fruit. Now, what's wrong with Shemitah fruit? Yes, I can eat it, but there's a certain time of the year when you can't find that same fruit in the field, the Torah says you got to burn it or you got to get rid of it from your house. So if I transfer that fruit to something else, that that something else, let's say I transfer the fruit, I, I trade it for somebody else's piece of meat, that piece of meat also has the Kedusha of Shemitah that at the same time that app, that fruit that I transferred has to be burned, the meat also has to be burned. So there's this idea of transferring the prohibition onto the thing that you exchanged it for only applies in two places, Avoid Zara and Shemitah. And therefore, it's only unique to Avoid Zara and Shemitah, but not by Basa B'cholov. So that if I sell Basa B'cholov, if I sell Basa B'cholov to, and for money, or whatever I exchanged Basa B'cholov for, the, the Isra, Basa B'cholov, will not be applied to the thing I exchanged it for. What is the example of Shemitah? Just like holiness, the Torah says, just like uh, uh, holiness transfers over to money, so also Shemitah transfers over into money. So maybe if it transfers over, the, the 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 it would go out to Hulin. So I say maybe you can have the Shemitah Kedusha go off the fruit if I transfer it to something else. Shemitah never leaves, the Isra of Shemitah never leaves the original fruit. So Ketzad, how does this whole thing work out? Let's say I have apple and I purchased, in other words, I exchanged the apples for a boss of the meat. Then both the apple and the piece of meat that I exchanged it for has to be burnt at a certain time in Shemitah. But if I change that piece of meat, so then then the meat loses the Shemitah uh, halachas and the, and the fish take its place. 
bedagim yain of exchange the the wine the fish into wine yatsu dagim nichnas yain yain shemen yatsu yain nichnas shemen. In other words, the, 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 I can, can keep exchanging, and and the the kedusha that the the isha shmita that was on the piece of meat that wasn't the original fruit or there was other fish or the wine gets transferred to the last item I exchanged it for. Okay, so what does this all mean? The last thing that I exchanged it for has the dinam of Shemiti. And the original fruits remain the Isra. So only by Shemitah and Abay Dezara, it's unique that the their prohibitions can transfer to the things that you exchange it for, but not by everything else. So the Gemara says, Honey, the Amma Okay, you found me two places, but uh, some people learn that even with two places, it can teach you in all Atarakula that this same din will apply. Because um, unless it says it in three places, then they say, oh, it's limited to those three places. But there's an opinion that says that even though the Torah gave you these halakhas, which are similar in two places, the rest of the Torah can learn it from these pl- two places. So answers the Gemara, this special psukim that tell us that this dinim only apply by Avodah Zorah and Shemitah, but by no other place in the Torah. And therefore the Gemara concludes that what? That if I have a cheeseburger and I exchange it for money, right? Even though the cheeseburger itself, I'm not allowed to have an all from it, but I exchange it for money. That money... I can go be Makadesh Nisha with it. Dr. Mishta, Hamakadesh Betrumais or Maisus or Matonis. Let's say you have Truma or Maisus or Matonis over May Chatas or Efer Chatas. We're going to discuss what that is in a moment. Harezim Makadeshes, Bafili Yisrael. So, what the Mishnah seems to say is that let's say I'm a Jew. I have this fruit. I'm a regular Yisrael. I have within my fruits the opportunity. The, the discretion to decide which coin I'm going to be I'm going to give it to the trumas and the maestros, right? And and there was a time period after this in the second base of English where they gave the, even the maestros to the coin. They didn't have to search out a levy. So if I tell the woman and says, "Listen, I want to be mikdash you, but I'm not giving you money. I'm giving you the discretion of from my fruits to decide which coin to give it to." Is that giving her money? So the Mishnah seems to say that's giving her some money. Because although you didn't give her a, a, a quarter to be Mikadosh her, but you're giving her the right to have discretion over your Tevel to decide which coin to give the Trumas and Maestros to. That's what seems to the Mishnah apply. Amma Ula, Amma Ula said, Taivas Hanor Einamam. So Tuva starts off and shocks us and says, giving somebody the discretion to decide which coin to give it to is not considering considered as if you gave somebody money. So Frank Gamara, wait a second. Ace Rabba Abba asked the question Ula. The Mishnah says you could be Makadash and Isha by just giving her over, by just giving her over the, uh, the right to have discretion of which coin to give the Trumas and Maestros to. You see, you see, it is worth money. Amale, so Ula will answer, you learned the Mishnah wrong. It's not that uh, the Israel uh, has is giving the right of discretion to the woman. Hacha, here we're talking about Yisrael, the Yisrael himself has truma. Now, how is it possible for a Yisrael to have truma? I mean, he's not a Kohen. He has truma that belongs to him. He had a maternal grandfather who was a Kohen, and that maternal grandfather died. And left him truma. So now he has truma that really belongs to him. It would belong to his grandfather, who was a kohen, his maternal grandfather. He's a Yisrael. It's really value money, and therefore he could be mekadesh the woman. And it's obvious that it's his. The kusava matanish lohurme kamishu hurmi and damin. And what it teaches you also that even if his grandfather the kohen, right, had his own tevel, and he didn't separate the the trumas from his own tevel, right. Because even if you're a coin, if you have tevel, you still need to separate it and give it to you, and give it back to yourself. But even if he didn't even separate it out, we consider it as if he separated it out. And therefore, when his grandson, the Yisrael, inherits it, he gets to keep, he could just separate out the trumas and it becomes his. And therefore, if he, he now, this Yisrael, owns truma, if he gives it, if she gives it to the to the woman, 
that uh, he could be Mekadashar. And that's maybe the mission is teaching you. The Gemara asks uh, another few minutes, but two minutes. Is, is the discretion considered money or not money? That was Rabbi Bar Oven asked this question to Ravuna. Amale, he said to him, Tenesa, we learned in, a, in our Mishnah. So we see that it is, discretion is considered money. So this was basically Rav Chiyabar Oven asking Rav Huna. Amale, so Rav Huna said to him, so, so this was Rav Chiyab asking Rav Huna. Uh, so, and Rav Huna says, it's a Mishnah. The Mishnah says, Taiva Sama is money. Amalei, so Rav said, wait, the Mishnah is not, there's no proof from our Mishnah. Our Mishnah is not talking about you giving her the discretion. It's talking about the Israel actually giving her actual truma that belonged to him, that he inherited from his grandfather. So this was what, we go to Ahmed Beis, Amalei, so Rav Huna answered Rav Chia, get out. Ichsev, so Rav Chia was very insulted. What do you mean, get out? He told him that you Rav Chia thought Rav Chia misinterpreted what Rav Huna meant. Rav Chia thought that he's, he's so upset that he's learning the Mishnah wrong. Amalei, no, the Rav Huna said, you have a, you have a point. Hachi Kamina, Rav Asi de Hutzel Koye Kavosech. Rav Asi of Hutzel holds like you, which means that, that really there are two ways to learn the Mishnah. So it's not, you can go either way. Either the Mishnah is teaching you Toi Vesanah as Mamim, or the Mishnah is teaching you uh, is not talking about when he's giving her the discretion, but rather the mission is talking about where he, the Israel, actually owns the truma that he inherited from his grandfather. Okay, so name a katanai. We could just do uh, just one line over here. Name a katanai. Let us say that it's a machlekis of tanoim, which means that giving discretion, the giving the discretion, is it is it worth something or is it not worth money? The mission of Brisa says. If you uh, stole the tevel of your friend, then you have to pay him back the entire, let's say you stole a pound of tevel from your friend, you have to pay him back the pound of tevel. You only pay him the 88% the of what you stole because 12% anyway he had to give to a coin or a levy, but the, he gives it to a coin. So why? You didn't steal anything from him. So therefore you pay back 88%. My love. So what is the argument? If you have to pay back 100% or 80%, they are arguing. The Marsava, the one holds that you, you have to pay back 100%. Hell, the fact that the, the Israel had the discretion to give it whichever coin he wanted is bombing, is, is, is you stole something from him. And therefore you have to pay him back 100%. The other on the Amahos that's stealing from him, uh, the, the fact that he had the discretion is not considered money. So that is what the Gemara now thinking uh, is the Machlaikis. So the Gemara says, Loy, not so. The Kuli Alma, and this is where we'll stop. The Kuli Alma, everybody holds the Toivas Hanoa in a moment. Giving him the discretion. If you have a discretion to decide which coin, that's not worth any money. The question is that the guy inherited Tevel that he got from his grandfather or Matanus Kahuna that he got from his grandfather. And what is the Machlaik? Why do you have to pay him back? It's one holds that if even if the, the grandfather did not separate it out, it's as if he did separate it out and therefore you don't have to give it to another Kayan. So the Yisrael, the grandson who, who inherited it, he, he he owns the 100% of this produce. And therefore, if you steal it, you have to pay him back 100%. The fact that his grandfather did not separate it out is, is, means that when he inherits it, he's going to have to separate to give it to another kind. And therefore, when the Ganav stole it, he didn't steal anything that really belonged to the Israel because he's anyway going to have to give part of it to another kain. And therefore, which is Rabbi Yeshua, Rabbi Yehuda, therefore you only pay a, the chulin shabai, the chulin part of it, but not the entire amount. Okay, we'll stop over here. We'll finish the parak Bezashem tomorrow.